Hey everybody, welcome in that uh, new tutorial which show how to convert uh, Unreal MetaHuman characters to Golem. So I'm uh, within the Quixel bridge, which is the right way to import your characters within Maya. So I invite you to check uh, the multiple tutorials regarding this on the Unreal YouTube channel. So I've been downloading that character here. I've been exporting it uh, for Maya and this is what I get. So notice that for now with the current version, as of uh, April 21, um, the clothes are not supported uh, within Maya. They're not exported and nor are uh, the fur and the hair. So this is why the characters is bold. But still, it's pretty great uh, starting point for having a great uh, quality of characters body that you can take advantage of and, uh, you know, bring into the crowd system. Uh, also, so this is usually how you've got uh, your scene starting with when you open it. So let me uh, bring the body back. So uh, let's probably like analyze quickly the scene. So there's at the top something called a DHL head, uh, which is a full skeleton hierarchy. Well, not really full. It, it goes from the spine and it has all the bones related to uh, the, the head. So this is a completely separated uh, system just to control and animate uh, the head uh, controllers so it's not connected to the body you can see those are different skeletons and you've got um, that mesh that for some reason is not exactly aligned with the rest of the body so not really practical but I figured like uh, it's you know it's the first version so they're gonna improve this so for now you cannot really take advantage of this because uh, those meshes here their skin onto that topology uh, and what we really want to have is have a skeleton which also controls the body. Uh, so probably if you have a rigger around it, you can like figure something pretty quickly. The hierarchy is, is more or less the same between the body and the head. Uh, but I'm not really good rigger, so I'm, I'm going to skip that part. Uh, within the LOD zero group, instead, we've got something which is called combine. And combine got uh, both has both the body and uh, the head uh, being... Um, Included within this uh, all combined as one mesh. So uh, this is something we can start with Regarding skeletons, you've got a transform called skeletons, which has two uh, hierarchies here There's one which doesn't have any specific name uh, You cannot really display it or at least I haven't uh, seen that but you know looking at the joints We can figure that uh, there are different position and this is what controls the skinning of uh, the character So when uh, you know you move uh, that joint here it moves the skinning accordingly as well and on top of that, you've got a driver skeleton, um, which is um, apparently constraining that one here. So those guys are connected to together, but the one which is actually controlling the skinning is that one there. Uh, the one which is not within driver skeleton, which is uh, just called root. Uh, and the probably final stuff, you maybe you notice that is here we switch into Z app. So as soon as you import a character within Maya, um, the Quixel bridge switch your session into Z app, so no big deal. We're gonna take advantage of this and bring those uh, characters within Golem anyway. So let's start fresh. I'm gonna open the character maker, go into the skeleton tab, and uh, as always, the only button you have when you bring a new character is to load uh, the selected skeleton button. So I'm gonna select my hierarchy, not the one in the driver skeleton. I'm gonna load that skeleton. It's going to tell me that uh, the segment scale compensate option is enabled on some of the joints. And that's true if you uh, pay attention to uh, those. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of blocked here. Uh, but uh, segment, scale, segment scale compensate is enabled. So no big deal. It's not really used here into that character. So we can totally disable that. And uh, this is really like uh, the only part you need to pay attention is you need to specify a up axis and a front axis, which makes sense. So my character is Z up. So let's say Z first. And the front axis, we can see that uh, the character uh, is looking into the minus Y direction. So this is Y from the scene origin to there. So that's the back of the character. And this is minus Y, so the opposite direction. So we're gonna say we want to go minus Y. And uh, we're gonna say, okay. Okay, excellent. And uh, we are kind of done. We just have to auto compute the skeleton mapping. It's going to figure everything for us. Like uh, it figured the spine, the right arm, every single uh, fingers. So really great job here making that uh, T pose and that hierarchy. It really works out of the box. So kudos to the uh, MetaHumans team here. 
Um, so physics shape, they'll have to be, you know, readapted, but uh, we don't plan to make any physics onto that demo, so maybe later. And uh, yeah, the T-pose is super nice because, you know, all the limbs, they are not fully extended. So we could figure the pole vectors properly for the legs, for the arms, for the fingers. So it's really, really all great here. So once we've good, we're good with the skeleton part. Um, and yeah, uh, just a quick word. Here we do not have imported the blend shapes. The blend shapes were into the other, you know, head, uh, which is not the one uh, attached to the combined mesh. But if you had blend shapes, they will appear here. There will just be one new channel. So you could have all those really great facial animation you can see within the Meta Humans demo videos. Um, okay, let's switch into the geometry part here. So no big deal. We just have one mesh. We don't have any diversity there. So um, should be uh, pretty fast. I'm gonna bring a new group uh, that I'm gonna rename meshes. Great. And uh, I'm gonna just select the, all the geometry I want to include into my character. So it doesn't have any clothes or so on. So I'll just select this, import it. It'll detect that my character has a two shading engine, uh, two shading groups, one for the head, one for the body. Each of those has their own uh, materials as well. So, okay, that's kind of pretty great. I'm gonna save uh, that character. So uh, that character is named Hannah. So let's make a new version out of it. And uh, let's export that geometry. So all the skinning weights, the UV, the normals within the GCG file format. May take a few seconds because the, the geometry is quite heavy. It, it's a really high um, level of detailed um, version of it. So I'm gonna use the GCG, it fully supports everything we can see here. We're gonna create a new version of this. Let's put the underscore so we've got a consistent name. And uh, let's wait for the process to export this. And uh, when it's good, you can see that that geo icon here appears uh, active now that you've been referencing a relative uh, GCG character, golem character geometry file, uh, which has some bounding box parameters. And you can see that the actual bounding box within the scene. Um, so yeah, we can probably like optimize this, but bounding box doesn't really are useful anymore these days. So um, when we are fine with this, we're gonna save that scene here. And I'm gonna jump into a blank Maya session. Just, um, I do this just to check my characters, make sure that they're all working properly. So I'm gonna bring my Anna06 uh, uh, characters in. It's asking me to uh, load the shaders. Um, yeah, well, we'll do that later. Uh, we just want to test the skinning first. We'll just assume that uh, it will, it's all gonna work properly. So uh, let's bring a few characters here, augment the distance, change the noise. And uh, one problem we may have is that that character here is under time bigger than what we expect. So what we can do is either we can resize that our scene or we can just resize our characters down. So I'm gonna say, I want to divide that unit by a hundred, zero, zero, one. And uh, there should be more now size to what expected. So either you resize your characters in your scene or either you change the unit into uh, your character file. So let me maybe show you how you can do uh, the second option. Let's remove those particles and let's say, okay, um, my characters are in centimeters unit, but so is my environment as well. So I want to uh, bring my population tool and now you can see that it's making bigger slots, 100 times bigger slots. We can change the distance and let's go back with a 1-1 one, one scale, as the characters will be super small. Let's uh, uh, populate that scene. As we don't have the shaders, uh, the characters are just orange shaded, but uh, I'll bring the shaders uh, just afterwards. Maybe what I can probably do is uh, uh, close this, save that scene, so it's called a Hana conversion. I can go here, I can go into Golem Render, and pull Crowd Shaders, and I'm gonna so it's gonna bring my uh, T-Pose characters in with all the geometry and also the shaders will be attached to it. So it's it's bringing all the geometry, so this is why it's taking a, a, bit, a bit of time. And uh, when it's done, you can see that now we've got uh, the full geometry, the character is not aligned the right way. Uh, so now we're good. So let's test if the skinning works properly. And let's probably also add some noise onto those characters. 
so they are not exactly lined up which is kind of freaky and uh, what we'll do is uh, just apply a motion to these guys uh, here there and uh, we're gonna load any motion we have within the character pack because uh, we've been doing the mapping properly so the character should be able to read any motion thanks to the retargeting stuff and here we go now we've got her Hannah meta human character uh, being converted with like three clicks four clicks maybe uh, and uh, fully available within the crowd so I can't wait for those uh, uh, features with uh, clothes and fur and hair to be added so I can show you how you can bring them within Golem and get the full definition characters uh, within Golem as well so pretty exciting times so yeah all good and uh, I guess uh, see you into the next uh, video